So today we'll look at operators in Excel. So operators are used to perform calculations on the data in an Excel sheet. We have already used two operators that is plus and the multiplication operator in the previous practical example to calculate the rate and the total bill. Now let's look at some other operators. So there are three kinds of operators in Excel. First you have your arithmetic operators, arithmetic, math. So these operators they perform mathematical calculations and you've already used them in your mathematics so they are pretty much the same. Okay and these operators they cannot be used with strings that means with text values you cannot use these operators. So let's look at some of these arithmetic operators. So you have your addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, exponentiation, meaning to the power of. Okay, exponentiation means to the power of. There you have the example 5 exponentiation 2 means 5 raised to the power 2 or 5 square or 5 multiplied by 5. And the last one is percentage which converts the number into a percentage value. So those were your arithmetic operators. Pretty simple, right? Next you have your relational operators. Now relational operators, they compare values. They compare two values. They can be used both with numbers and they can also be used with text or characters. Now the result of this operation is either true or false. Now let's look at what that means. So those are your different relational operators, equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, and less than or equal to. Okay, so in the usage in the first one, it is A1 is equal to B2. So you know that A1 and B2 are both cell addresses. And if they have some values inside them, if they are equal, then you can choose to do something. If they are not equal, you can choose to do something else. In the next example, you have C1 not equal to D1. So if the values in C1 and D1 are not equal to each other, then it will result in true and you can do some task. If the values are equal, then the result will be false and you can choose to do something else. So in the same way, you can use the other relational operators. Now the last type of operators are your logical operators. Now, logical operators are used to join two or more relational expressions and this is done by either using or and and not okay so i have just given an example there for your reference b5 greater than 0 and b5 less than 40. so here we are looking for a value in b5 which should be greater than 0 and it should also be less than 40. so you're checking two conditions if the value in B5 is 30, then it is greater than 0. So that condition is true. And you're also checking whether it is less than 40. So 30 is less than 40. So again, true. Only if both the conditions are true, then the result will be true. Otherwise, it will be false. Suppose the value was 100 in B5, then the first condition, 100 is greater than 0, is true. But the second condition, that is 100 is less than 40, is false so your entire expression becomes false so those were your three types of operators in excel now let's use some of these arithmetic operators now i have created a table in the next worksheet to give you a demo okay so when you have a lot of worksheets in your workbook it becomes very difficult to find information that you are looking for if the worksheets are named by default like sheet 2, sheet 3, sheet 4, sheet 10, sheet 100. So imagine you have 10 to 15 worksheets and they are all named uh, as sheet 1, sheet 2 and so on. So it becomes very difficult for you to find out exactly what is there under each sheet. So that is why we rename sheets so that it becomes easier for us to locate whatever we are looking for very quickly and easily. So let's go to the sheet. It's very easy just left click on sheet 2 and there that's the table I have created now let's rename this worksheet 
so that the next time I want to access this, it becomes very easy. I know exactly which one it is. So let's just give it a name which is related to whatever is happening on this worksheet. So let's give the name operators. So to rename a worksheet, you just have to right click on the worksheet and then left click on rename and then type in the name and that's all. So let's go get back to the operators sheet. Okay, so now here I'll show you how some of these arithmetic operators work. So this is 10 plus 5. Now I've already told you that in Excel, when you use a formula, it should always begin with an equal to sign. So I'll just give an equal to sign. Now this becomes a formula. Now this becomes a formula which is adding two numbers, 10 plus 5. Remember, arithmetic operators only work with numbers. All right. So I just hit enter and there it does the addition. Now this is 43 minus 9. So if I just give an equal to in front, now this becomes a formula and it will give me the difference that is 34. Similarly, here in multiplication, 3 multiplied by 11. Please be careful. The multiplication symbol is not X, but the asterisk symbol. That is the star symbol. So I'll just give an equal to sign. So 3 multiplied by 11 and the product will come to 33. Here the backslash 100 backslash 34 backslash is for division. So let's just give an equal to sign in front and it will give me the quotient. The next one exponential. I've already told you exponential means raised to the power of something. Okay, so this is 5 raised to the power 2. The power comes behind and the number comes in front. So this is 5 square or 5 multiplied by 5. So if I just give an equal to sign here, it gives me the answer or square of that number. And the last one is percentage, which just changes the value to a percentage value. So that's how your arithmetic operators work. Do you notice that the columns B, C and D, they have different column widths compared to the other columns on this worksheet. Similarly, the rows 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9, they have different row heights when you compare them with the other rows in the worksheet. So in Excel, you can adjust or change the column width and the row height so that whatever you typed, whatever you have typed in the cells are clearly visible and which improves the readability. So to adjust the column width, it's pretty simple. You take your mouse cursor to the right margin of the column for which you want to change the width. So take your mouse cursor here. This is the right margin of D. You press the left mouse button and hold it. And then you can just drag it and you can make it bigger or you can make it smaller. All right. Similarly, for the row height, you can take your mouse cur cursor to the bottom margin, press and hold it, and then drag it to make it either bigger or smaller. See what happens when I make it very small. See, it's not clearly visible. So this is why you may need to adjust the column width and the row height sometimes. And that's how you do it. So you can also change the row height or column width using the format option under the cells group in the home tab okay under the home tab so let's go to the home tab so let's first select the cell for which you want to adjust the column width or the row height so let's say i want to change the column width or row height of meaning so under the home tab click the home tab then go to the cells group and then you have format over there just left click on format and there you have the options for row height and column width. So you can manually enter a value there. So let's click on row height. So the height right now is 36. So if I want to make it bigger, I can give it a value like 50. So there I have changed the row height. Now if I want to change the column width, I do the same thing. Home, cells, group and then format left click on format and then column width right now the column width is 38.86 so i can make that bigger by giving it a value like 100 
So there I've changed the column width. So you can either use the mouse or you can use the format options under the home tab in the cells group to adjust the row height or the column width.